John here guys, and today we're talking about the Catalyst Machine Works Slam Nasty, and this is the Super 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 Slam. And I have this thing built up, and my word, is this thing beautiful. Oh, hits you like right in the feels because of all of the nostalgia that you feel from this familiar but progressive shape that reminds you of the Norris uh, Speed, the Speed Attic, the SL5, uh, which was one of those original um, frames that I talked about in the frame overview of this thing. But it takes that design and takes it to the next level and brings all of your modern features. This is the first Catalyst Machine Works frame to have the three hole arm so you should get a little bit of weight reduction and a little bit of strength right there with that missing hole. Um, of course, this thing has the braces front and back. I have the optional flip stick. I have the optional um, Axi stubby antenna holder back there and these little antenna tubes for my XM Plus receiver. Uh, this is a tight build. This is, after all, the Super Slam um, and I kind of went back and forth on what components I was going to use for this build, but here's what I settled on. The tried and true Racer Star rebranded AirBot ESC. This is the 35 amp 6S anniversary edition. I'm, I'm mating that with the Hyperlight F4 OSD flight controller, my favorite flight controller of all time. I have double-sided taped to the top of that flat side of the flight controller. I love that flat side. Um, I have the AKK Race VTX and my XM Plus receiver. Now for that mounting tape, I am using M3 30 pound mounting tape. So I don't have any zip ties or anything holding this on. This should anchor it more than sufficiently. Uh, as mentioned, I'm using the Axi Stubby antenna, a gigantic capacitor at the pigtail, this is a 1000, I believe 35 uh, capacitor, and I'm using uh, my favorite camera as of these days, the Runcam Robin. Holy known unknown flying objects. Uh, for motors, I went with the Hyperlite 2206 1722 KV Team Edition. These are actually the 2206.5, which means they have the upgraded bearings and a little bit of power. That's right, guys, I've been going down in motor size lately uh, to be able to get a little bit more control, a little bit more precision. I finally realized I just don't have the skills to compete with the top few percent of multi-GP pilots. So I'm taking it back to basics, slowing it down, getting cleaner lines. Flew a similar setup to this um, on one of my raging droners, which I also love by Catalyst Machine Works. Uh, at a few tracks back to back with timing systems enabled. And while my brain was telling me that 2207.5 was faster, my times were telling me that the more controllable 2206.5 for me was faster. Now, why is that? Um, it's because I just don't have the super you know, muscle memory skills to be able to control that. So, all together, this comes in at a very light weight with props and Kevlar, nice strap. It comes in at a fairly low weight, I believe it's 290 grams. I'll put the exact weight on the screen. Now the Slam Nasty has a very interesting looking bottom plate where you have the option of running 20 by 20 or 30 by 30. And it is sort of cut out right here. I haven't seen that on any other frames, but it's it, it makes a nice place for your strap to fit. Um, <laughs> it is a little bit slammed. It is not enough room for a three layer stack. So I was originally gonna use um, what I've been using for this motor setup recently, the Emacs Mini Magnum 2.1, but it was too tall. So I went back to my tried and true. Now, I know what you may be thinking, this is a budget friendly offering by Catalyst Machine Works. Have you ever had something that was both affordable and premium at the same time? Well, this is it. And I have um, hand selected this set of components to match that entire inspiration. So this racing build comes in at a mind boggling 
$225. So incredibly cheap. You can afford to build up three or four of these, no problem. Now note, <laughs> that is minus the optional accessories uh, that you have here, the braces, the flip stick, the Axi holder. So price as shown, well, that's kind of what they do in the car commercials, right? Price as shown is closer to $250, but that is still an incredible value. Now, um, because of the way that they have designed this frame, you have the openness of a standard frame, but you also have the arm security on there of a sandwich plate design because you have these two little mini sandwich plates that fit on the front and the back. That means that you kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, you'll have your arms secure, especially with this bracing, and you still have enough room to fit this extremely low profile stack. Um, and then keep the overall profile exceedingly low. That means I think that this is going to be able to survive some crashes. Now, what is the weak point on a top plate frame? A lot of times it's the standoffs, but if you can slam it and get shorter standoffs, you have less of that height to worry about those standoffs bending. Shorter is always gonna be stronger in this case. And that is really the premise. It's not just a looks thing. It's not just an aggressive stance thing to be able to scare all the other racers at <laughs> when you line up to take off. It is also increasing the strength while keeping the weight low. So there is a purpose behind this design other than just looking awesome. Now, before I forget, when I did the Cannonball review, I boneheadedly just totally spaced on the fact that the Cannonball is named after F1 race car driver, Gabby, who is Cannonball, that is his pilot name. The X-Class craft that I re reviewed is named after him. Okay, so apologies to him for missing out on this. And the Slam Nasty, <laughs> named after team pilot, Big Nasty, Mr. Bolton. Uh, let's not skip out on that fact. So I'm sure he had a lot of input on the design and testing of this. So this is quite an awesome feat. Some notes that I had were, I kind of wish these braces were a little beefier. Um, they do seem a little thin, but uh, we'll see if they hold up in crashes. I think you will be okay. I'm not sure if this design with the little triangles at the front are just mostly for looks. Um, it does keep the weight down having a brace like this. Um, I, I would kind of like for it to be a little bit thicker. I also kind of wish that the braces would have been cross compatible with some of the other releases, maybe America. Um, that would have been kind of nice. But if you look at this thing, it has sort of a, a unique uh, arm design right here. A stretch H in the back and a standard X in the front. It flies great though. And I think what they were trying to accomplish was, can we get the majority of that Catalyst Machine Works smooth feel without using the staggered arm design? Now the staggered arm design on the America, on the Raging Droner, on the Smooth Operator, it really is something that you can feel in the air. So this being a more affordable option doesn't have that feature, but I've often wondered for racing, how critical is it to have that smooth feel? I, I don't know if it helps you or not. I do feel it. So when you pay a little bit more for a Raging Droner or America frame, you will feel the difference. But is that critical for racing? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna keep testing it and flying these things. But uh, one thing is for sure, racers need to account for your budget when you're doing a build because you cannot start going to races unless you have two, three, you know, and if you're gonna go to a big competitive race, I'd even suggest you bring four quads with you. And the best way to race 
is to have all of your quads identical components, top to bottom. Now, why is that? A couple of reasons. One is that if you break something, you switch to the backup, you want it to feel exactly the same. You don't want to be flying half the day, then you go to fly again your backup and it has different size motors, different ENC, different camera. There's something that's changed that is gonna mess up your muscle memory that you have been competing with all day. These races are, you know, yes, they're fun, but they're also a competition. So this price point allows you to really have those, this entire fleet. If you see those top racers going to a race and they have a stack of quads this high, stacker than, you know, higher of a stack than unlimited pancakes day at IHOP. Pancakes! Pancakes! No pancakes. Pancakes! No pancakes! And you think like, geez, I wish I was sponsored so I could have a stack of quads that high too. This Slam Nasty allows you to have that stack at this price. So I really appreciate them putting out a frame at this price point to be able to get more people into the racing game. I personally still really like my Raging Droners, but this has a lot of benefits to it as well. And uh, so I'm gonna keep putting these back to back and I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I now have almost identical setup of these on a Raging Droner and the Slam Nasty. So I feel confident that they're close enough in the way that they fly. They have the same motors, they have the same camera, they have the same antennas, all that stuff, to where I'll feel comfortable swapping back and forth between those. Uh, because I do have my multi-GP qualifier coming up. I wanna get qualified and see if I can make it to nationals this year. It's gonna be really tough though, because there are a ton of new, extremely fast pilots out there. So we'll see what happens. Here's the footage, guys, thanks. Yeah.